They waited until work arrived and had to forget the matter. Victor was the first. He was the Clara's ex, or not. They had a complicated relation. This kind of not with you, not without your relation. We all knew it was with you because they loved each other. But they too were strong-minded, Clara more than him. Fortunately, your relation made them keep in touch, so time never played against their love. Victor was one of the contacts we knew, one of those that came to us, one of the most reliable. He got involved in the business by both conviction and love, and was left in contact because he couldn't dream, although he had the special skill of finding safe paths for the trips. What's up? He said while came in. Hi, how are things? Clara answered. We always let Clara answer first, just to see the point of the relation they were in. If the answer was how are things or something like that, the thing was going well. If it was warmer, thing was going really well. If there was no answer but, and if the answer was sarcastic, storm approaching. It didn't affect us, but we worked out better the tone of the conversation. If Clara wasn't there, it was easier, unless he tried to involve us in one of their reconciliations, mistake we made once and no more. What did happen yesterday? Victor asked. I have asked the same right now. We only know that Rita sent us the other sign, and we didn't appear around. Clara answered. He will explain everything when she comes, Priscilla said. Oh, fine. I thought something happened in the middle of... Victor said with relief. No, we hadn't even come, she explained. Whatever would be. Luckily, I hadn't anything for yesterday. Today I have two. One will come at 3 a.m. and the other is arriving, Victor said. Here we will be, of course, Clara said pretending indifference although they noticed that she wanted to prolong the conversation as much as she could. Ursula noticed it immediately, and if she could notice it, it was too obvious. Victor left the hut slowly, as he wanted to see the moonlight falling over the horizon. Clara left with him, and they sat down together in the riverside, in the precipice. It was almost impossible that someone could see them. The others look at each other with understanding and with a little bit of envy. It was Junio who looked after the men that came first. Junio's sofa was so lovely. It had impeccable upholstery in cream, green, maroon and golden colors. She had this ability to calm people. So hysterical she was for the rest of life. So skillful she was to make people fall in an extraordinary peace. The woman Victor had announced arrived at 3 a.m. And, as Clara and he were still chatting, Ursula did it. Her sofa was more like ours. Simply a disaster. In fact, Sunyo was the only one who really was careful with those things. She neither transmitted the same calm as Sunyo, but she made the travel fast and safety and nobody had ever made a complaint. Nobody had ever a complaint of no one of us. We supposed everything had gone fine, and instead for my little, tiny, huge mistake, there were no evidence of having made something wrong. Afterwards arrived Thira. I didn't like her, but she made her job in a very efficient way. Although I didn't like her manners or anything in her, but she worked well and we had to put up with her. Anyway, that one or the other worked for the organization didn't depend on me. Actually, it was very convenient to have no decision on anything. That was what made people longing for power stay in power. Thera brought two more customers, two men. Hers was always the most urgent, the most important, the most everything. She was one of those persons that took as much trouble of make her job right as make the rest of the world know the good she was. She met the customers in a different point each time, and they came together to the hut. She said this was safer. I was not certain at all, but the rest agreed with her, 
and at the end we didn't have to say a word about her job. She had, of course she had, a lot to say about the way we worked, even knowing she couldn't travel because she couldn't dream. I could bet my head she tried it many times. Once I caught her throwing Clara's sofa down the street. It jumped into the river, of course. We had to steal another in an outlet, thanks God she didn't pay attention to the change. I'm almost certain that she thought that the only thing we had to do was push in the sofa. I'm quite sure that she thought we were useless and they could dispense with us. I mean, they had to dispense with us. And since she realized it was not as easy, she had to put up with us. The others didn't mind, but I marked my sofa's place to guess if she used it or not.